Hello everyone, welcome to lesson 36 of C programming on the Mac. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering or doing a little introduction to files in C. And basically what a file allows you to do is save information to the file so that you can reuse it for next time. Or just read information from a file, whatever your program needs to do. But uh, basically that's something we haven't learned yet because every time we've run a program so far, the memory is it's just saved in memory and then it's gone every time we rerun it. So that's why files are nice because you can save information that you might want to use next time. So that's why uh, we're going to be covering files. So uh, to start out we obviously need to create the file where we're going to save all this information. So to do this we can go up into the file menu and go to new file which is also command N for short and we can also do this by going to the action button and just doing add new file. Either way you come up with the same menu and under Mac OS 10 and other or the subheading of other whatever um, we have a bunch of files here but what, the one we're interested in is this empty file and just because empty file doesn't give any um, other important information about the file it just uh, reads you the information that's on it which is nice for these tutorials. So let's just hit next and we'll call it data and go to finish. So now you can see that Xcode opens up the data file and you're able to edit whatever is in the file which is nice as well. So we can just say in the data file um, if you enjoy these tutorials please subscribe to Apple programming. And you can leave a short little message like that and um, people will hopefully listen to the message. Anyway, um, if once you're done with that, uh, you can go to file save or just do command s to save the file. And now we can go back into our main.c file. So in here, we have to do one pound define before we get started and this is going to be the file location. So I'm just going to call it k file location. And the file location is found just by a string. And to do this, you have to kind of understand how computers read, uh, how they can find the path of a file. So files in a current directory, which means basically the same folder as the project or whatever you're working on, um, basically this uh, means that it's in the same file and or in the same folder rather as the thing you're looking for so if I was to look for this data file this means that the data file that I'm looking for should be able to, should be found in the same folder that the programs run in so you would think that um, with that logic here's the Xcode project here's the data file and they're both in the same folder so all should be good However, the Xcode project file really is not where the, the actual program is run. It holds random bits of information, but it's not where the actual program is executed. The execution part comes from uh, this build folder. So if we go two levels deeper, build and the debug folder, as you can see, here's our lesson 36 executable file, which is basically our program. So what we need is to find the data file, it's two levels up. So we have to tell our program that the data file this is looking for is two levels up. So go back one, go back two, here's our data file, and we need to let the program know that is where the data is located. So to do this, to get one, uh, one folder up in our levels, basically we would say this and that means it's in the parent directory that would, that would mean it's one level up from what we're looking for but we need two levels so we simply do two more dots and a slash so that right there is where the location of our data file is simple enough uh, let's move on to actually creating the program now um, there's uh, two variables that we have to create here one's a pointer and it's a little bit new this is known as a file pointer which basically saves the address of where the file is located and it works the same as pretty much any other pointer it points to 
where it's located. So um, it, the file pointer is just saving the address of where the file is located, and then we can use it in our program. So file, and we'll just call this data, uh, data file, I guess. You can call it whatever you want. Um, so we'll just call it data file, and it's a pointer once again. And uh, one more thing we have to create is a character, and we'll just call it C. And we'll get into why we need to use these in just a second. So when we're dealing with files, we have two very important things that we need to do. We need to get the address using F open, and then we need to close it back down by using F close. Simple enough. File open, file close. So F open returns the file uh, files address or what our pointer can take as the file. So data file will get whatever F open returns, and We'll use k file location. That's what the first parameter is looking for: is the location of where the file is, and the second part is what file mode we're using. And you're probably thinking, what the heck is a file mode? Well, a file mode is whether it can read the file, write the file, append the file, and there's a bunch of different things that you can do. But all we're doing in this simple program is we're reading the file. So we're just going to use an R in there, which means read. So now we have the data file pointer is going to get the address of where the file is located and the file is opened up. Simple enough. Um, but what if the file doesn't exist? What happens if uh, we screwed up with our file location or the file isn't even there? Then we're going to run, run into pro some problems. So what we have to do is create an if statement. And there's different ways you can do this, but uh, if statement's pretty easy, I guess. So uh, that's not what I meant to do, but if... So we just make an if statement like this, and if our, basically what this is saying is if the data file pointer is equal to null, then we want to execute this information. But the nice thing about an if statement is that this right here is actually going to be executed anyway. So even if it is equal to null, um, the, the data file still gets where the file is located. This is just a safety net to make sure that um, if the file is equal to null, then uh, we have a backup plan uh, just to make sure that nothing goes wrong in our program. So we're just going to print fail to the screen and we're going to exit our program with a status of 1. And you can see the status in our uh, debugger which is nice because then you know where you're going wrong with your program. So anyway, um, really all the important stuff is right here. The data file is getting what f open returns, and it's getting um, it's making sure that it's going to be reading from the file. Okay, simple enough. So now continuing on, this is the part where we actually have to write the information out to the console. So we're going to use a while loop here, and this part gets interesting, but it's really not that difficult. So um, one important thing is that uh, we used our character file up here. And we're going to say C gets, and we're going to use our F get C. And that means F, or file get character, and, it's, and it looks like this. And it's simple enough. And the reason we use this is because F gets, the other thing that uses strings, as soon as it uses, sees a backslash, and it doesn't really work that well, be, so if you have a lot of lines of code, this works a lot better. So C gets, F gets C, and as you can see here, this parameter is looking for a file pointer. So what other file pointer would we want to use other than data file? And if this is equal to, or sorry, not equal to, so what this means is F gets C will return the first character in the file, and it will give it to C, which is our, our character. As long as it's not returning end of file, which means that the file is done, this program will keep running. So end of file looks like this, just a big capital EOF. So that's what F get C returns if it's at the end of the file. So as long as we're not at the end of the file, this while loop will keep running. So in our statements, all we have to say now is printf percent %c for character, and we'll print out C. And all these parentheses are very important as well because um, if you don't encompass this whole thing it doesn't work right. Basically um, what we're doing here is if, or sorry, the C character will get 
F gets C, whatever that character that first character is in the in the data file, it will return that to C as long as whatever it returns here is not equal to the end of the file, then it will print it. The next time it runs through the loop, there's a basically, if you can imagine the um, every time it runs through, it's going to the next character. So the next character will be, be read, and as long as that's not equal to the end of the file, it will print it out. And it will keep going through this until eventually that last, um, the next, when it goes through all the characters, when it goes to check what character it's on, it will be equal to the end of file. And then we will jump out of the loop, obviously. So that's how that works. And it's simple enough. But then the last thing we have to do is close down our file because we're now we're done with the file. So we'll just call data file to close and we should be all set. So let's go ahead, build and run this. Make sure we have no errors. And as you can see, if you enjoy these tutorials, please subscribe to Apple Programming. So it worked. And again, we'll just run through it one more time. We define the K file location, or we define where the, the file location is. And again, the, this just means the parent directory, since the data file is two folders up from where the program is executed. Then we create two variables. One's a file pointer, which points to where our file is located. And the character, which comes in handy later when we are printing out all the information in the file. So then here, our data file pointer gets uh, the location of the file from F open, and if it doesn't work, then uh, we will exit the program. But uh, since we have the file there, it all is fine, and it continues on. And now we have the location of the file, so we can use F get C to uh, read each character in the file. And as long as it's not equal to the end of the file, we keep printing out all the characters until it is, and then we are done the loop. And then when we're done the loop, we close the file down using the file pointer that we uh, originally made. So that's uh, basically the simple outline of how reading a file works in C. And obviously you can write to files as well, but reading to files is just a simple introduction to how you can actually take information from a file that uh, you didn't just write and you save somewhere else, and you can read it in your program. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and um, by the way, at the time of creating this tutorial, um, Objective-C tutorials are on the way, so if you're really getting mad at me for not uh, starting any of those, uh, those will be probably starting really soon. So anyway, we'll be getting on to Objective-C, which will be very interesting, and we'll probably be continuing some C tutorials as well. But um, anyway... Uh, please subscribe to the channel, and if you haven't already, um, there's hopefully going to be many more tutorials to come, and I don't intend on stopping anytime soon. So, um, and yeah, if you have any questions on this tutorial, just leave the, your questions in the comments, and rate the uh, video a thumbs up if you approve. Anyway, uh, this was lesson 36, and more tutorials are on the way. Thanks for watching.